welcome to another opening tour of the Chessman Gallery. We are so proud to have tradition, transgression, and transformation, contemporary mosaic art from the Pacific Northwest by the Northwest Mosaic Artist Alliance, who is a fantastic group, um, acclaimed artists from Oregon and Washington, grouped together, support each other, learn new things, push the envelopes, use traditions that are thousands of years old. Um, and we're so lucky to have them here in the Chessmen. Um, so we have, we are open. Come visit us if you can. The show uh, opens, it's open today and it will run through the 4th. And our hours are Thursday through Sunday, 10 to 4. We feel like it's a really safe environment. We sanitize every morning. We have a six person limit. Um, masks and social distancing are required. And coming in and being inspired by uh, a show of this magnitude of creativity will just brighten your spirits and in a time when we're all kind of isolated. And um, So come see it. It's full of the unexpected and it defies gravity and it's got captivating illusionism all through it. Um, you will find yourself saying, how did they do that? So, but we are going to learn some of how they do that because I would like to introduce you to two of the members of this amazing group, Lynn Adamo and our very own Joanne Fashaw. So enjoy the tour, thank you. Hi, my name is Lynn Adamo and I am a mosaic artist from Bend, Oregon. I've been doing mosaics for quite a long time, about 20 plus years, and I have sort of honed in my practice to working with um, some of the traditional materials of mosaic smalty, which is a glass that is used traditionally in mosaic, and, I, and stone as well, which is again traditional, and I partner it with many lovely found rusty objects. Um, I like to, this is the combination of reclaiming old stuff that people might just think is garbage, but I like to turn it into something art, art, turn it into art. And um, things that are, are really like old rusty roofing nails that are totally trash, but I've turned it into something interesting. And um, all my work is pretty much abstract. I don't do much representational. I just find my interest in, in design and the materials is what drives me the most. And um, here's a few more examples of combination of materials that I really like to use, um, stone and the found rusty objects. And I, I like to try to do a combination of more traditional looking laying of the material um, and um, which is the, and the style of this laying is called ondamento, and you'll see in this show a lot of different styles of that being used by our artists. Um, and here's another fun example of a piece that an old rusty rake that was found across the street from my home, and um, I reclaimed it and built this substrate um, underneath to hold it. Whoops, and it also can be used as a uh, a thumb um, <laughs> instrument. Um, and so anyway, I just like to combine all these things and including really unusual material, which in this case I, I use some felt that I made and it's a soft material, which is really not like what is in normal, traditional, um, functional mosaic. But in this case, I really liked the juxtaposition between the soft material and the hard material. So my name is Joanne Daschle. I am a mosaic artist in Lincoln City, Oregon. My studio is actually right here in the Cultural Center down the hallway from the Chessman Gallery. Um, so I'm really proud to be part of this group of mosaic artists from around the Northwest, several of whom were teachers of mine, like Lynn, that you just met. And she actually taught me how to work with some of these materials that I now use a lot in my work. Um, I like to combine materials like the small tea that Lynn talked about, the traditional mosaic glass that's very textural and has some three-dimensional qualities to it and combine it with stained glass, which you'll see 
Um, and a lot of high mosaics right next to the smelty with grout. Um, so people who are used to seeing functional surfaces, mosaics are used to seeing this often with stained glass and grout. Um, but then combining it with the ungrouted sections of the small tea gives you this nice contrast of texture and depth. Um, and I feel that you get, you know, this detail quality in the small tea area and um, the flat planes of the stained glass sort of meld together. Um, and my work is generally focused on nature. I'm very interested in our interaction with nature, what we can learn from it. Um, you know, what it teaches us, how we're affecting nature. And I live on the coast, so a lot of it is reflecting on the nature that I see here, which we're so lucky to have. Um, so plants like this in our local forest, sea life, and um, of course, seascapes like this. And this piece I just completed for this exhibit and features the silver spot butterfly, which um, many of you would be familiar with. And a few of my pieces are also the small pieces that I did of some local birds. Um, this white crown sparrow and a pygmy owl, and there's a blue heron as well. Um, these were a sort of collaboration with a local um, bird photographer, Jack Doyle, who um, is very involved with the Lincoln City Audubon Society chapter. And he takes wonderful photography of birds, so I asked him if I could use some of his photographs and um, play off of those to create some pieces. And they're also combining the small tea glass with um, stained glass, so you get that contrast in dimension texture. So we want to share information about um, the artwork that's done by the other artists in our group. And one of the artists that we're pleased to share with you is Jennifer Coons. Um, Jennifer is an artist based in Southwest Washington. She lives and works on a rural piece of property. So she's influenced a lot by nature. Um, and you can see in some of these pieces, some of those influences from nature. Um, and from the local environment where she lives. And she has another very distinctive style, this kind of folk art sort of a style that, that now she's been working in this style for such a long time, she's quite well known by in this style. And it's, she's really refined the way that she cuts the stained glass and, and is quite well known for that. It's very charming. She's also really well known um, in these uh, gallery exhibits for her portraiture work. She's done quite a few um, highly detailed portraits of famous people and less famous people. Um, and some of them are in permanent public installations in various places around the country. Um, but some of them are portable works of art on the wall like these. And she's very interested in um, social justice and historical moments like the suffragists' um, movement for the women's right to vote. So this um, piece is featuring Alice Paul, who was um, a prominent suffragist. And it's layered with underneath this um, crash glass, or some people would call it that, but tempered glass. Underneath that, there's clippings, historic clippings, that feature the suffragist movement. And then, again, you'll see that technique used in this piece where she's featuring the Statue of Liberty. It's called Mother of Exiles, and it's telling a story about immigration and all the people that have come to this country from all different places. So the layers that are underneath are showing you some of those immigrants and their stories that came to Ellis Island. And the next artist in our show is Richard Davis. He is an artist who lives on Whidbey Island in Washington, um, has a long history of uh, interest in mosaic. He has a degree in sculpture, but he was also a professional chef for many years. Um, and he's an avid traveler and loves to research mosaic around the world, um, has quite a bit of information about, about many mosaic sites all over the place. And in his work, 
He likes to feature recycled materials. He is a great scavenger, and he finds glass and ceramic, old things, newer things, and he has been recently building larger um, pieces that are sculptural. He also, um, being living near the water, lots of his subjects are um, ocean-type themes, and this little series is all um, unglazed porcelain that he undoubtedly found in a secondhand construction store. Um, a lot of vintage materials as well. He recently has been going into even more um, representational subjects um, and is just really been exploring his materials in depth a lot lately. I want to point out something on the wave sculpture that um, I think people will find interesting. If you come and see this in person, to take a minute to get down underneath and just look up through the wave, yes. and you'll see that there is very thick glass that is in, embedded in the top of the wave, and the light comes down through the wave, just like in real life. Yes. It's amazing. Ah, I will add a thing. I know a personal story from Richard is he used to love to boogie board all the time and be inside the wave, and now he's... He says he's older and he doesn't do that anymore, so he wanted to recapture that feeling of being in the wave. And the material that Joanne mentioned, the, the thick glass that's transparent is a material called Dal de Verre, and it's very thick, transparent glass that is traditionally used in, in big church glass uh, window installations. And, and he has taken this material and he shears it and incorporates it in his fine art. Um, sculptures. So our next artist that we wanted to share with you um, information about his work is Scott Fitzwater. Um, Scott, I think actually Lynn has known Scott longer than I have. They used to live um, pretty near to each other. And he is um, a retired engineer. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that probably you can see some of that influence in his work, this attention to very fine detail. He works with materials like slate, and this, I believe, Lynn is from roofing slate. Yes. That's sliced very thin and then turned on its side and um, used in just very interesting varieties of applications. And you might be wondering, this sculptural dimensional element, he actually formed this, these waves himself with um, the the cement mortar and the fiberglass mesh to create this, this undulating form. And then he painstakingly laid all those tiny little pieces of uh, slate on those substrates. And he, this one here, he was venturing out in some even more minute detail of that he actually went into using stained glass on edge in addition to, I believe, slate as well. And you can just see this is a newer piece and the, the detail is just keeps on getting finer and finer as it goes. So it's, it's really interesting to see the work of someone like Scott where he will use the same material in so many interesting ways. That he can explore something that seems like a pretty, you know, simple material, but then just by cutting it and placing it in different um, ways and patterns, it's it's really unique and um, kind of transfixing, I guess I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe you can talk about Well, this one scares me, to uh, be <laughs> honest, and, but I think that was the intention. And these are obsidian needles that he used. And on edge, you can see how pointy and scary they look. Um, he the was, shadows, the uh, shadows. shadows are fantastic. Um, yeah, and it's crazy. You need to do this detailed view of it like you're seeing now because straight on, you can't really tell. But angles and, and yeah, it's just quite fascinating. Uh, another new technique he's trying is this entire piece is made out of um, Mexican small tea, and it is little squares that he has cut and, and then stacked and glued. And again, it forms a dimensional um, object. 
in a very interesting use. The very the muted palette's really interesting, and then but the dimension adds just more depth to it. Our next artist is Karen Reicha. Karen um, lived for many years in Southern Oregon, in Talon, Oregon, and um, just in this year moved to Portland, Oregon, so she has established a new studio there. Um, this piece, I think, speaks for itself. You can see the commentary there um, referencing the history of our democracy. It's called the Foundations of Our Democracy, and this is the White House and referencing the history of who actually built that White House. Um, that it, it was built by slaves, and there are some darker moments in our history to think about and reflect upon. And she's used a combination of stained glass, unglazed porcelain, which has the matte quality of what you might imagine bone would have, and then using the mortar really effectively to create texture and movement. Um, these are some more pieces of Karen's. She works with slate as well as, she's very, she's amazing to me as a Renaissance mosaic artist because she works with glass and ceramic and stone. <laughs> so many different materials and so well. Um, she's very detailed and precise in the way she um, fabricates all the pieces and um, these these pieces are part of a series. She also created some larger pieces in this series that were in the exhibit um, three years ago at the Chessman. And to me, they um, read as the, the view that you see when you're flying over farmland. I think that's the intention. Um, those irrigation circles that you see on the ground from the mechanized um, irrigation equipment in the farmland. Um, and then this piece she created this year, and this is a reflection, it's called Testing 123, I think is the whole title. Um, and the, this is a reflection on this year. So when the testing finally became available for coronavirus and everyone was wanting to get in line, this is sort of what was happening, lining up in the parking lot. Um, to get your coronavirus test. Next, there's another Portland artist. And we didn't mention, but Scott is also based in Portland. So this is kind of a series of Portland artists. Um, so this next artist is Mark Brody, who's also based in Portland. And Mark has been making and teaching mosaic for many, many years and teaches um, kids in the Portland public school system, as well as adult students at Sitka Center and other places. Um, he's combined here fusions. So he does actually um, do some fusing with glass. Um, not many of us do that. And so there's, there's a lovely um, combination of textures that he's created with the flatness of stained glass, like down in here, and then these somewhat dimensional but softened fused pieces that create the little buildings. Um, this is a scene. Of, uh, it's P-Town is what it's called. Yeah. Beautiful color, happy, you know, sunny feelings I always get from Mark's work. <laughs> This next artist is um, from Seattle. He is Todd Campbell, um, and he has been working in mosaics for about 10 years, I think, and he also has found, uh, he really resonates with um, salvaging pieces that he gets from the sea, um, rusted, de de um, deteriorating bits of rust, and the, the, his stone and his slate, and just very, very, um, um, like what can I say, very much attention to detail and line, and um, 
quite classical in style of laying, but then taking it further and, and it, breaking the boundaries and uh, really exploring this, the texture and the design. And so all of this whole series has beautiful found objects along with various mi mixtures of materials. And I believe he also forms his own substrates. Um, and again, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he, he's a professional writer by, by profession and, and has just really gotten very excited in, into mosaics and, and studied with some very good masters and has really, his own unique voice is shown through these works. So, um, Lynn, I just wanted to ask really quick before sure. we go around the corner sure. to look at, um, at Todd's um, studio, Matt Kelly. Mm -hmm. um, you, I know, have um, a, a really solid understanding of ondamento. And mm -hmm. this is a term that a lot of people have not heard that are not mosaic artists, right. but um, it's something to learn if you want to understand and appreciate mosaic. Can you yeah, I can explain, yes. Um, ondamento is an Italian word that means mo motion or, or walking, or and, 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 and this means the flowing of these lines, the way these individual pieces of mosaic, and an individual piece is called a tessera, and that's there are lots of Latin words in this art form because it was so old from Latin Roman times. So these little pieces are all there's a language that we have that's based on ancient mosaic principles. That is, um, there's a, a technique that we type we try to follow, and sometimes that we go ahead and break it. But the way that these little pieces are laid are very conscious. And and there and the, the the flow of the line, the building the line is called ondamento, and there are many different ways to do it, many different types. And on the way around the corner, we'll see a couple other pieces um, from Mark Brody that are not quite his typical style. There's something different, working with some different materials than you saw um, in the large pieces. So he's using stone and small tea and some uh, other objects in those smaller meditations. Um, and then the studio mate of um, Todd that we just looked at, the large pieces that were done by Todd Campbell is Kelly Knickerbocker. Um, she, they, they um, both work in Seattle, Washington, and Kelly is just a master of mosaic. Um, she teaches around the world and frequently in this part of the country. We're very lucky to have her um, teaching so many different techniques and ideas to people um, and I, I'm not exactly sure how to explain what's so magical about <laughs> Kelly's work but it's always surprising. Um, I can add a few things too in that she's always pushing the envelope and yeah. always using new materials explaining or explaining exploring new techniques and materials and again you can the ondamento I was describing before she has you can see these flowing lines and, and, and her the thing that excites her so much is all the different types of material and including she's this this colorful line you see that goes around the edge of this it's a material called epoxy sculpt and it is an epoxy material that's used in other ways but she's decided to throw it into this mosaic composition using it as the material in a focal point instead of using it as simply an adhesive, which it normally is. Um, and I just, what can I say? There's so many different materials in your shirt. Yeah, this is really a piece to come and study in person to see where she's combining this beautiful glass and she's, she's bringing in these little um, pieces of, they're like radio, Oh, radio they're, they're, or they're electronic, electronic parts? Components. Yes. I don't know what to call them. They're, they're, <laughs> yeah, and stone and ceramic and it's just oh. a study. And this one is a, she is just a master at also taking ceramic dishes and cups and, and breaking them into shards and turning them on their edges and using the glaze and um, in, to make it be a beautiful component of the work. One thing, I've, I've shown this piece to several people in the last 24 hours, and they're 
Every single person is amazed when I say, and that's wood. <laughs> and they say, what? It's not wood. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's wood. Little tiny twigs. But she's incorporated in such a way that it's very surprising that you don't realize that it's wood because it's presented in this other way. Mm -hmm. This is Mark Brody's work. It has that feel of like a mandala type design, although it's more free flowing and and uh, organic, I would say. It's called Fire on the Mountain. And then the other one in the window is um, uh, Richard Davis again, and it's, uh, uh, yes, come see this in daytime with the light shining through because he's got more of the doll de fair and some other geo type things. So there's opaque and translucent sub, sub, um, elements in this mosaic as well.